So there are a number of agents that uh, continue to be pursued in, in pancreas cancer. We've got a lot of studies that actually suggested a number of targeted approaches uh, did not pan out into positive results. There's one area that seems to be very interesting uh, to continue through drug development, and that's uh, uh, patients with proven uh, BRCA2, BRCA1, or PALB2 mutation. And frankly, whether it's germline or somatic, meaning it's present in the tumor only, or it's present in the genetic of the patients does not matter for the level of responsiveness that we see with platinums or with uh, emerging PARP inhibitors. Specifically, there are two PARP inhibitors that hold a lot of promise in pancreas cancer, olaparib and rucaparib. There may be others also third generation. The one that seems to be the least interesting, unfortunately, is an agent called veliparib or ABT888 seems to be less potent, uh, holds a little bit less promise, but still worthy of exploring further. Uh, the, the, the question uh, is what percent of patients would be BRCA2, BRCA1 positive, uh, or PALB2 uh, positive? This would be about 10 to 12 percent of patients that have either germline or somatic mutations. And that's, uh, you know, 10 percent is a sizable number. In addition to that, uh, there is uh, this whole concept of what we call BRCA-ness. They're not quite BRCA, but a lot of abnormalities that induce genomic instability that could resemble, you know, these, these mutations or sensitivity to these agents that um, essentially uh, are active in the presence of these mutations. And this is another 12 to 13 percent of the patients, although, again, it's mostly established in ovarian and breast, not yet in pancreas, but this is work in evolution. So you may end up with about 20 to 25 percent of all your patients that have either BRCA or BRCA-NS. So what, what, what drives response in those agents? So we've talked about the PARP inhibitors. The other group of agents is actually uh, 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 the platinum, cisplatin, oxaliplatin. Uh, then the next question, of course, logical question is, so, okay, well, we, should we take oxaliplatin and PARP inhibitors and put them together? So a study is being conducted with cisplatin, gemcitabine, and PARP inhibitors, although one of the PARP inhibitors. Although if you look back at the literature, preclinical literature, it suggests that perhaps it is not optimal to combine a platinum with a PARP inhibitor in this group of patients, and it makes more sense to combine a topoisomerase inhibitor like irinotecan or MM398 with the PARP inhibitor uh, to, inu to induce a better response in those patients. So when you think about this group of patients, with what we have as a standard of care today, fulfirinox would probably make more sense because of the presence of the platinum. Uh, and what would make sense in terms of drug development is to do a 5-FU MM398 or 5-FU irinotecan, preferably 5-FU MM398, uh, with a PARP inhibitor, uh, again, olaparib or rucaparib or some of the other emerging PARP inhibitors. So when we look at the patients with BRCA uh, mutations, the thought, especially right now, when you were to look at the clinical landscape where you have fulferox um, as one option, uh, although gemcitabine cisplatin could be another option. After a few months of therapy, patients get tired of the chemotherapy. And so the question is, you know, can you maintain the those patients on a, a PARP inhibitor, for example, a uh, single agent once you actually control the disease or shrink it to a level. Uh, and the answer is, uh, well, we don't know. We need to study that. And a study is being conducted with olaparib uh, uh, versus uh, no, you know, no treatment versus placebo. And, and that study is looking at a maintenance strategy following a platinum uh, derived chemotherapy, so fulferinox, maybe gemcis, platin, or even carboplatin, paclitaxel, in some instance. Uh, so uh, uh, this study uh, is currently accruing. It's only selecting for patients, though, with germline uh, mutations, not somatic mutations. So that's only targeting 2 to 3 percent uh, of the patient population. But these strategies are worthy exploring because, frankly, patients get tired from going through chemotherapy after six months. Um, if we have a strategy, especially in that subgroup of patients, where we can maintain that response without adding to the toxicities, it would be a great place for PARP inhibitors to be looked at.